we're beginning what should prove to be a most remarkable study. We'll be hovering over the stark wilderness of the Sinai Peninsula, watching intently as several million former labor camp slaves from Egypt begin to wend their way toward the Promised Land. No armies bristling with spears will protect them. No caravans will visit them with the massive provisions necessary to feed them. How will they survive? God has a plan. He will ask them to build him a tabernacle, a prefab portable building for his home away from home. He will be all they need. Every step he will be with them pitching his tent alongside theirs. Quote, let them make me a sanctuary, said the Lord, that I may dwell among them. Exodus 25, 8. Really? About 400 years after this, King Solomon declared, but will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built 1 Kings 8, 27. At first, it seems unbelievable. Our pale blue planet is just a speck in the vastness of space. Would the Almighty's arrival not shake the earth out of its orbit? It certainly seems so. When the Lord touched down, the mountain shook violently, thunder and lightning assaulted their ears and eyes, and billowing smoke filled the sky. Yet Moses was invited up into the mountain to meet with God, and there he gave the prophet his detailed plans for what was a scale model of heaven. The New Testament calls the structure, quote, the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true one in heaven itself, Hebrews 9.24. This hints at how significant this structure was going to be. What was this special building called? In its entirety, it's the tabernacle, where the Hebrew word is mishkan, meaning residence or dwelling place. However, more technically, the whole structure is known as the tent of congregation or the tent of meeting, where the Hebrew is ohel moed. We will also find in Hebrews 9 that the holy place is sometimes called the first tabernacle, and the holiest of all called the second tabernacle. Actually, the tabernacle proper, the dwelling place of God, is the inner tent composed of 10 white linen curtains colored with blue, purple, and scarlet and adorned with cherubim. We can see this clearly in the description of the second set of coverings made of goat's hair. Quote, you shall also make curtains of goat's hair to be a tent, O hell, over the tabernacle, Mishkan, Exodus 26, 7. So the goat's hair tent covered and protected God's residence of white linen. If we find it incredible that God would come to live in such a tent, what will we think when we hear about events 1400 years later? John records, quote, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, John 1, 14. Especially when we discover the word dwelt could be translated tabernacled. Once again, the glory of God had come to earth, not now to live in a tent in the desert, but to take up a human body, the babe in his mother's arms was God now dwelling among us. Or as Paul would describe it, quote, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, 2 Corinthians 5.19. No longer would there be constant animal sacrifices. Now to our amazement, we discover that he himself would become the ultimate sacrifice, one for all, once forever. So our studies of the tabernacle will provide rich illustrations of Christ and his amazing work.